Okay, uh, Assalamualaikum and good morning. Okay, uh, today experiment, we're going to do experiment number 4, titled Enzyme Inhibition. Eh? Enzyme Inhibition, page number 43. So, uh, before we start our uh, experiment, I'm just going to give you a brief introduction of uh, enzyme input. So, in fact, we're going to have a specific class on enzyme input. So, uh, in food application, uh, we, are, we are using a lot of enzyme. Uh, a lot of enzyme. I like to, uh, to call this, uh, divide into two categories. One is uh, desirable enzyme, and number two is undesirable enzyme. Desirable enzyme is enzyme that we want to work in our food to get the final output. Simple example is uh, like in the production of cheese. Uh, cheese. We make cheese from milk. Uh, cheese, we're going to add uh, enzyme to make the protein coagulate and we can get the cheese from the milk. And undesirable enzyme, however, we, we don't want that, that enzyme. Usually it is an endogenous enzyme, enzyme that's present in the food in the system. We don't want them to, we don't want the enzyme to be active. We try to constrain, we try to inhibit because when this enzyme uh, is in active form, it eventually will uh, deteriorate and might spoil the food that we like to create. Alright, uh, okay. This undesirable enzyme, there's many ways to control it. Uh, uh, one way is to do enzyme inhibition. Enzyme inhibition, there's so many enzyme inhibition techniques which we're going to discuss into more detail in the class later. One way is uh, for today's experiment, for example, we're going to do uh, blanching where this is one of the in enzyme inhibition technique where we're going to introduce hot water treatment uh, the, the objective is to denature the enzyme making the enzyme un unable to perform its normal task so uh, enzyme branching uh, okay enzyme so enzyme inhibition we are specifically looking at the browning activity of enzyme so this browning activity is a condition uh, where your food turn into brown due to the activity of enzyme. So this browning activity actually is a, it's also some food product is also desirable. For example, in tea making, wine making, we want them to turn into brown so that it have that desirable color of a tea. And most of the time, uh, we try to control enzymatic browning because enzymatic browning, especially in fruits and vegetable, is a major problem in the post harvest. Uh, of this kind of food because once the food turn into brown, consumer they want to buy it because consumer perception always say the food maybe is already uh, denatured, deteriorated and also spoiled. Okay, when you talk about enzymatic browning, so basically uh, there are two, there are many enzymes actually, many uh, mechanisms involved in that, but there are two main enzymes we normally discuss. Number one is the uh, polyphenol oxidase. Uh, or short acronym is PPO and number two is uh, peroxidase enzyme, uh, TOD. So this and these two enzymes, okay, uh, these two enzymes actually normally is uh, already in the food, in the in the fruits and vegetable, in the cell of the fruits. So what happen is when uh, the food is damaged, either you cut it, you pluck it during to harvest the fruits, this enzyme will be released out. And this enzyme will interact with its substrate, which later on produce a, a brown color of the food. For example, uh, polyphenol oxidase, for example, it will interact with the polyphenol is the substrate, which turn polyphenol into quinones, which later polymerize into melanins that form the brown color barrier on the surface of the food. Uh, for peroxidase, peroxidase is a uh, peroxidase the. Uh, Oxidize, oxidize enzyme. Eh? So what it does is it uh, interact with the substrate, oxidize the substrate. This oxidize substrate, which later can trigger the browning uh, activity in your food system, lah, in your food. So uh, proxidase, another interesting thing uh, about proxidase, it is also a thermostable enzyme. Thermostable enzyme, in other hand, it's uh, stable at higher temperature. Okay. Okay, in our class uh, next week on after Hari Raya, we're going to discuss more on the uh, structure of functional enzyme and 
generally speaking, the enzyme uh, have its unique structure. So once you somehow uh, denature or disturb the structure, the enzyme cannot function anymore. So this structure is made from uh, uh, amino acid sequence together, held together by non-covalent. Non-covalent is not a very strong uh, interaction. So when you apply stress, physical stress, in this case in the form of heat, it eventually can rupture this non-covalent and make the structure of that particular enzyme change, which eventually uh, inhibit the enzyme. So the idea is because polyphenol uh, proxidase is uh, thermostable, so it is the most thermostable in uh, browning enzyme. So if you be able to denature this enzyme, you also be able to denature the other enzyme. So that's the reason why we choose uh, proxidase for this particular experiment. Lah. All right. So if you turn to page number 32 until 35, eh, this is uh, the protocol for enzymatic browning activity in uh, sample, input sample. Today we're going to use two food samples, which uh, are going to use uh, green apples and potato. These two, um, I mean, it's very uh, well known. Huh? It's easily to turn brown once you cut this sample. Huh? So the protocol is quite simple. What you need to do is uh, to submerge your sample, food sample, in a boiling water, in a hot water. So, we, so today we're going to do a series of time interval. You want to look at uh, what specific time this enzyme is already inhibited. Today we're going to do one minute treatment, uh, two minutes treatments, and five minute treatments. So uh, after we submerge the sample, we're going to grind the sample, small pieces, grind it into a puree form, and we're going to add the sample with its substrate, in this case, a hydrogen peroxide. And if the enzyme is still active, you can see the color changes. The color changes uh, into a reddish brown color, reddish color. However, if you be able to uh, inhibit or denature the enzyme, the, the enzyme interaction will not occur and there will be no color changes. So that's indicate that the enzyme is already inhibited and your treatment is sufficient to uh, stop the interaction from occur. All right. Okay, okay, for browning experiment, munching experiment, we're going to have two samples. We're going to use uh, apple and potato. We will peel both samples, eh? peel and cut into uh, wedges, cut. Then, okay, then we're going to uh, submerge the sample. You can, both can start. Sample into uh, boiling water. So, right. Okay, this okay. We have three sets. Uh, the first one is for five minute treatment, three minute treatments, and one minute treatment. All right. Okay. Uh, different treatment time: five minutes, three minutes, and one minute. Okay. Now we are done with uh, five minutes. So what we're going to do is we're going to rinse the sample with uh, running water. Running water. Just simply pour it and okay, rinse with running water. This is uh, to ensure uh, completion of the treatment. Eh? Okay, next step is to cut sample into uh, dice size. Okay, this is a sample of one minute treatment. You can you can still hear the the crunchiness of the apple. Eh? So if you do this, if you proceed with five minutes. Yeah, you no longer hear the, the, the crunchiness of the apple. Alright. Okay, uh, once uh, we wash the sample, then we have to weight the sample. 
takes 5 gram of the sample. Very simple. Okay, next is we want to uh, grind the sample into paste. Lah. So you put the sample okay, and add uh, some sand. Just a little bit of sand. Uh, and a little bit of water, 5 ml of water and grind the you know, sample okay, be sure to uh, make sure that all sample are grind uniformly eh? so you might want to continue for a few minutes until all sample uh, run uniformly. Okay, once the sample has turned into this, you might want to add uh, more water, five more mil water. So in total you are adding 10 ml water. your sample transfer into the test tube so we are using funnel and cotton to separate the solution the liquid the extract from the sample Okay, uh, next step is to mix our solution with the substrate. We are adding one mil of guanadol. And make sure to use a proper pipette. and one mil of hydrogen peroxide. Close your tube and gentle shake it, mix it, make sure all uh, are mixed together and left it for three and a half minutes. Then we will monitor the color changes. Okay, uh, this is the result after we incubate for three and a half minutes. As you can see here, the far right, my hand right is the control. For this is the control. Any pointer? Okay, don't believe. Right. This is the control. Okay. You can see it's 
completely turn completely brown, so indicating that the enzyme is still active. And this is the treatment: one minute, uh, two, three minutes, and five minutes. Uh, you can see uh, all the treatment indicate that the enzyme is already inhibited. For apple, you can see the uh, color uh, control the browning still happen. One, three, and five. Uh, the browning is already inhibited. If you compare between uh, our potato and apple, you can clearly see that uh, the, the enzyme in potato is much higher than apple, uh, indicating by the uh, more intense color. All right.